If humanity has no common goal, it cannot have a common path. And if there is no path, there is no goal. Friedrich Nietzsche The question of the meaning of human existence is one of the most profound and complex in philosophy. Throughout history, many answers have been proposed, but no final clarity has been achieved. From the point of view of science, the emergence of man is the result of a long evolution. But does it explain why we exist? Charles Darwin believed that life had no higher purpose or destination. However, many scientists and philosophers disagree with this view. From the position of monotheistic religions, man was created by God, and his meaning is to follow the divine plan. But what exactly does it consist in? Different faiths give different answers to this question. Existentialist philosophers, such as Jean-Paul Sartre, believe that human existence has no predetermined meaning. Everyone gives his or her life meaning through free choice and actions. Other thinkers believe that the meaning is in self-realization and development of the potential inherent in man. According to Aristotle, the purpose of man is to realize his unique capabilities and achieve happiness. From the point of view of humanistic philosophy, the purpose of man is to live ethically, caring for the good of other people and the whole humanity. As we can see, there is no unambiguous answer to the question of the meaning of life. Everyone must seek it for himself, based on his own life experience and worldview. Perhaps, in the final analysis, it is in this search that our destiny as thinking beings endowed with self-consciousness lies. By never ceasing to wonder about meaning, man advances in his spiritual and intellectual development. The amazing suitability of the universe for the development of life seems as if it needed an explanation. It is hard to shake off the feeling that the universe was in some sense preordained for the emergence of life. Steven Weinberg Whether the fundamental constants of the universe, such as the speed of light, gravitational constant, etc., are something planned and predetermined, or just a random result of the evolution of the universe, has no definite answer. There are different points of view among scientists and philosophers. From the position of scientific realism, these constants reflect fundamental properties of reality that exist objectively, independent of the observer. From these positions, their meanings were determined at the dawn of the origin of the universe in accordance with the physical laws to which it obeys. On the other hand, supporters of the anthropic principle believe that many constants are exactly as they are, because otherwise, life and reason could not have originated and developed in the universe. That is, the universe has adjusted to the possibility of the existence of observers. There are also more radical views, for example, Max Tegmark's idea of the multiverse, according to which all possible combinations of values of constants are realized, and we simply live in the universe where they turned out to be suitable for our existence. So far, none of these hypotheses have been proved or disproved conclusively. Perhaps in reality, these constants are the result of a complex interaction between fundamental laws of physics, random processes in the early universe, and evolutionary mechanisms that resulted in conditions favorable for the emergence of complex structures, including life and mind. The issue continues to be hotly debated in the scientific community. The most reasonable explanation for why physical constants have exactly the values that observers allow is that our universe is only one of infinitely many. Roger Penrose the assumption of the existence of other universes with different physical constants and laws is quite legitimate within the framework of modern cosmology. This hypothesis is called the multiverse hypothesis. It is based on several considerations. 1. The inflationary model of the early universe suggests that our observable universe is only a small part of a much larger inflationary bubble. Other regions, with different values of physical parameters, may exist beyond our cosmological horizon. 2. String theories and M-theory describe many different vacuum states, each defining a different universe with unique constants and laws. 3. Principle of Anthropic Selection In the multitude of universes, our universe should be realized with values of constants that allow the emergence of life and observers. 4. Quantum effects, according to some assumptions, can generate branching of the universe with different states of physical laws in each branch. Man creates in the world not only his history, but to a certain extent, the world itself. Nikolai Berdyaev The unique abilities of the human mind often make us wonder if man is in some sense the center or even the embodiment of the universe itself. 
On the one hand, science has not yet discovered signs of intelligent life in other parts of the cosmos, which may testify to the exclusivity of man. As philosopher E. Hussle noted, human consciousness constitutes reality, giving meaning and significance to the world. This distinguishes us from all other things that exist. On the other hand, the scale of the universe is so large compared to man that it seems incredible to identify it entirely with the human mind. As K.E. Tsiolkovsky wrote in his Space Fantasies, man is just an atom, a grain of sand, compared to the gigantic scale of the universe. Many scientists also believe that life and even intelligence in some form can exist on other planets, the theory of panspermia. The universe itself remains largely a mystery to us. We know neither its age, nor its origin, nor its ultimate fate. Thus, we can hardly say with certainty that the human mind is the entire universe in its diversity. Rather, it is but a small but unique fragment of a vast cosmos that we are only beginning to comprehend. Is not this mystery of the universe an incentive for the further development of man as a thinking being? Science broadens our worldview and gives us new possibilities for constructing the world. Werner Heisenberg in the history of science, there are indeed many discoveries and inventions that seem to violate the usual laws and parameters of our world. Here are some vivid examples. The steam engine. In the 18th century, it seemed incredible to many that a powerful engine could be created using only water and fire. It was a challenge to traditional ideas about the possibilities of engineering. X-rays. The discovery of rays invisible to the human eye that could pass through dense objects stunned contemporaries. It expanded the boundaries of the visible world. Superconductivity. The ability of some materials to lose electrical resistance at low temperatures seemed absolutely unnatural. Laser. The ability to generate an intense, narrowly directed stream of coherent radiation was seen as a challenge to the nature of light. This paved the way for modern optical technology. Quantum computers. Manipulating individual qubits at the quantum level for ultrafast computing is another example of the impossible becoming a reality. And the list goes on. In fact, any fundamental discovery expanded our understanding of the universe and at one time seemed to be a rule breaker. This is how science pushes the boundaries of knowledge further and further. Man, with the help of science and technology, creates a second nature, an artificial environment that compensates for the shortcomings of the first nature. Francis Bacon. Based on the technical and scientific achievements of mankind, we can conclude that man, in a sense, creates a part of the universe. First, science allows us to understand the fundamental laws of nature and the structure of reality. And knowledge about the world, in a certain sense, creates it because the world exists for us as we know and understand it. Secondly, technology expands human capabilities, allowing us to explore new spaces, create new materials and objects, and influence natural processes. That is, we literally complete the world. Thirdly, human consciousness and culture form a special reality of meanings, ideas, values. This second universe can also be considered as a human creation. However, on the other hand, the very possibility of cognition and creativity is inherent in the laws of the universe. Therefore, we can say that man rather reveals the potential inherent in the universe, but does not create it completely from scratch. This is a very deep question that has no unambiguous answer. Man not only cognizes the world, but also creates it. In his work, he gives birth to a particle of a new reality, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. The metaphor of the universe as a sandbox and man as a creator in it implies an active, creative position of man. Not just passive contemplation of the world, but striving to change, improve, build within the limits of available opportunities. This is consonant with the ideas of Russian cosmists, Tsiolkovsky, Fedorov, Vernatsky, who saw the purpose of man in using reason and labor to expand life and reason in the universe. The transformation of nature, the exploration of space, the development of knowledge, this is the path of active creativity. From the point of view of philosophy, man reveals the creative potential inherent in the world. After all, if the universe is reasonable, then reason and creativity are its imminent properties. A human being is an agent of these universal creative principles. Of course, human capabilities are limited. 
but the aspiration to knowledge of the world and creation for the benefit of people and all things is what makes man a true creator. The idea of the universe as a field for the realization of this creative potential is extremely optimistic and constructive. It gives our existence great meaning. This is its philosophical value. Man's senses are imperfect and limited. There are many phenomena, invisible to us, but real. Maybe it is them that the inhabitants of other worlds see. Vasily Orlov Our vision of the universe is largely determined by the capabilities of our senses and the structure of our thinking. It can be assumed that beings with a fundamentally different sensory organization, or psyche, will perceive reality differently. As Konstantin Eduardovich Tsiolkovsky said, the world is a totality of sensations of organisms. It is quite probable that there are phenomena and objects in the universe which fundamentally cannot be comprehended by the human mind. These may be intelligent beings with a different logic of thinking, dwelling in other worlds with laws of physics unknown to us. Some scientists believe that our mind is limited by the so-called anthropic principle. We can understand only what is necessary for our existence in this world. But there are perhaps other forms of consciousness and cognition. Therefore, it is quite logical to assume the existence of reason and scientific knowledge that is inaccessible to humans in principle. This is an exciting but also humbling thought. We are far from being the crown of evolution, and our possibilities are not limitless. The universe is much wider than we can imagine. The world is nothing but our perception. Arthur Schopenhauer Throughout history, many prominent philosophers, such as Plato, Kant, and Hegel, have pondered the nature of our perception of the world around us. Modern neurobiological research sheds new light on this problem. It is believed that our perception is largely determined by the peculiarities of the structure and work of the brain, which, in turn, is the result of millions of years of evolution. As Charles Darwin noted, the brain has two main functions survival, and reproduction. It is to ensure these that the evolution of our consciousness was directed. In particular, research shows that people are better at noticing dangerous or potentially useful objects than neutral ones. This is due to the work of the limbic system of the brain, which is responsible for emotions and instincts. Also, our perception is strongly influenced by expectations that are formed based on past experiences. This helps us to navigate faster in an ever-changing environment. However, with the development of culture and rational thinking, humans have gained the ability to overcome the limitations imposed by the evolutionary structure of the brain. We can think critically about our own perceptions and question established ideas about the world, although it is probably impossible to completely get rid of the influence of biological factors. The biggest illusion created by our brain is the feeling that we see the world as it really is. Anatomo Todorov, 